Welcome to Talking Ted, everybody. This is the first episode of our series where we're going to explore all seven episodes of Ted, the Talking Teddy Bear. That's my subtitle, Mike. I'm Jessica Lynn Verde. And I'm Mike Richards. You may know us from Mission Log the Orville, Seth MacFarlane's other series, but now we're taking a little bit of shore leave to talk about Ted, the series. We're going to sip a little bear fight whiskey, chat with some actors and creatives, and see where that takes us. Probably nowhere good. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Mike. <laughs> Cheers, Jess. So how are you enjoying your whiskey today? I I am uh, trying something a little bit different today. I got some true honey teas. Ooh. And uh, there's an apple cinnamon variety. And that with about an uh, uh, ounce and a quarter of Bear Fight Whiskey in my Planetary Union mug. Yes. Uh, that was procured by my lovely wife, Tiffany. Uh, we, uh, or I, am enjoying it that way. Just a little, uh, little hot tea. Yes. And it brings out the flavor very nice. Oh, that's, I love that. I think honey goes very well with this, but I do like the ice. I like the water experience. So I think all you're going to see with me during this series is ice in the glass. Though we will provide for you throughout our, our series, different cocktails that you could potentially make with Bear Fight. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Bear Fight Whiskey has a number of recipes on their website. Uh, I've tried most of them. Uh, this whiskey is excellent, neat, uh, just just about, you know, maybe two fingers. I've tried it a variety of ways. I'm saving the uh, the grumpy old man for when we t- chat with Scott about uh, Loud Night. But you are the grumpy old man. <laughs> so I can just drink that whenever I want. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe that's what I have right now. You, I mean that with all due love and respect. Of course. We have the creator and the voice of Ted that we're going to talk to a little bit later in this program. Before we do, we'll talk a little bit about the series overall, our thoughts and hopes and dreams about a talking teddy bear. What do you think? (laughs) I I think it's great. I mean, I have, you know, spoiler alert, I've I've watched all seven episodes already. We're going to do a... Not quite a mission log style deep dive into each and every episode, looking for messages, morals, and meanings. But we will take a look at every episode and and chat and sip. And I've enjoyed the heck out of it. And I mean, Ted the movies and Ted to you know Ted and Ted two with Mark Wahlberg and uh, Seth MacFarlane voicing the the uh, titular bear. Titular, yes. Ju- titular. I was trying to think of epimonious, but I couldn't quite come out with that but word. But we got there. Sort of. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. <laughs> Uh, those movies were so much fun yes. and, and just reached a, a place in, I guess, my childhood that uh, th- that not everybody can. Like talking about Flash Gordon, the movie, wow, which sure. when, I was, when I was 12, 13 years old, I was convinced that was the greatest movie of all time. How could you not be, though? <laughs> I have um, residual nostalgia because of how my father experiences that movie. Oh, like, no way. Yeah, because he loved it so much. I love it. In a weird way, while watching Ted the movie, I'm experiencing how it how my father might. Right. And I actually own the Flash Gordon um, record with all the Queen songs on it. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I, for me, it was, I mean, I was, I think I was about 12, maybe 13 years old when that film came out. Wow. And my brother and, my brother and I, uh, eight years older than I am, um, was doing quite a bit to make sure that I had things to do and, and places to go and included me in things uh, oh. where I'm sure he would have rather been hanging out with his, you know, with his friends, his age. Uh, but I remember going to see Flash Gordon a couple of times and it was just, man, I thought that movie was just fantastic. Um, and then it did, you know, obviously flashbacks of watching uh, Flash Gordon, the uh, serial on right. PBS yes. when that got shown as a kid, just, just, just really good nostalgia. I love that. Yeah, it, the, the movies itself themselves are a really great homage to being a kid and like having a hard time trying to be an adult in today's world. How do you like and there's some so much whimsy in the fact that you have a, a talking teddy bear that we buy, you know, and, and we buy it. And spoiler alert, uh if you think Ted has boundless whimsy, uh in an upcoming episode we do find the bounds of Ted's whimsy. We certainly do. Yeah. <laughs> I actually can't wait to get on the other side of this and talk to Seth. Anything else you want to talk about before we invite the the eponymous? <laughs> <laughs> Just looking forward to moving along. See you there. 
Hey folks, we're here to talk to you about Barefied Whiskey, how much we've been enjoying it, and how you can enjoy it yourselves. I'm a whiskey drinker through and through, and I think I have found my new favorite go-to in Bear Fight Whiskey. It's a little bit of scotch, it's a little bit of bourbon, it's a little bit of grape, and we want to extend a discount to you so you can sip right along with us. Bear Fight Whiskey is an American single malt. It's one of the most awarded single malt whiskeys in the U.S. It's a simple recipe, it's a fantastic flavor, and it goes great with anything. So head over to bearfightwhiskey.com, type in BF20 at checkout, and get yourself $20 off of shipping. And now... Back to the show. Welcome back to Bear Fight Presents Talking Ted, presented by Bear Fight Whiskey. Today we're going to talk about Ted with the creator, dare I say, the father of Ted, Seth McFarlane, friend of the show, been a good friend to us for the last several years as we covered the Orville on uh, Mission Log of the Orville for the Roddenberry Podcast Network. Seth, welcome back. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much, you guys. I, I I feel like I have to point it out for your viewers that I'm like, we had some technical issues. So I'm like, I'm I'm like staring. I'm I'm still mastering this whole okay, so that now I'm looking at you guys. But now I'm really looking at you guys. So <laughs> we we can feel gonna, it regardless. I'm just gonna like stay right here and make it a just a happy medium. Split the difference. I I appreciate yeah. that. Although I do have to ask, how do you feel being re- referred to as the father of Ted? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take okay. it. Well, I think I think it's canon that Ted's mother was a was a Chinese uh, seamstress who yes. left a note inside him. I think was the was the the yeah. line. A note that said she's <laughs> she's never had a vegetable. Yeah. <laughs> so now we know. We genuinely were so excited to talk about Ted, and also, God, I think I think of us too, both Mike and myself. He had watched the series first, and he said. You're not going to believe how great it is. And so it's really easy. We could just spend this whole time talking about just how much we loved watching this show. But what I want to know is like, how much fun is it on the creative side of it? Because we're going to talk to all the actors from the show, and I'm sure they have plenty of fun stories. Is th- is this more challenging or is it more fun to create something like this with a CGI bear? Um, it's 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 tedious to, you know, it, it's interesting with a show like Orville, it's, there, there's a lot, there's a breadth of, uh, there's a lot of variety with the kind of visual effects work that you do. And, and, and here it's just, you're kind of doing one thing every day and you, you, you gotta, there's like a, a series of steps. Like you have to shoot your empty plate. You have to shoot your stuffed bear pass. You have to shoot, you know, a ball pass for the visual effects studio to get the lighting right. So wow. there's, there's a lot of things like, it's very much like shooting a, a traditional multi-camera sitcom so, or a single camera sitcom rather. So it's pretty basic in that regard, but there are these extra steps that just, you know, they, they're worth it because they make the bear look great. But day after day, it just starts to get really, you know, you, you hope that somebody will come up with a way to make this go faster. And there's gotta be days where you don't even have the actors on set because you're doing all those passes or I guess you have to have like, what's the challenge with like having yeah. everyone on set when it comes to that? Well, the passes are, are the passes are pretty quick. It's like it's like if it's a scene with John and Ted, we shoot, um, you know, we'll we'll shoot a stuffy pass with um, with John next to the stuffed bear. Stuffy, I love that. I know. Oh, God, why did I say? I say that now. <laughs> I just, uh, um, well, there may or may not like, be a furry episode in the future, so now we have a stuffy. <laughs> it's like when you catch yourself. Like parroting terrible set lingo. Yes, you know, it's, it's all over. We oh, talked about that the stuff. first time we had you on, which was like the, the code for going piss or something like yes. that. Yes, I was going ten one. <laughs> oh, let's get them into the works. <laughs> like they're curing cancer for God's sake. It's I just, love it. But yeah, it's so this, there's the stuffed bear pass with uh, the actor and the stuffed bear. Then the bear comes out and you do the scene and you get the actor's performance. And then once that's done. Um, you have to you do like a ball pass which they take this this gray shaded ball and put it in into the shot where the bear is to kind of give the the animators like a a a base level lighting guide with how to how to light the bear so it's it's you know it's it's shooting wise it's pretty basic like you do like your your wide shot your you know overs your close-ups your anything you need and then you kind of kind of move on so it's 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 much more of a uh 
just a pure raw kind of actor's show than what I've done before. And I imagine with Ted and Ted 2, that was physical effects at that point, or was that a CGI bear at that time as well? No, that was also a CGI bear. It's actually uh, the same studios that did the movies. Well, because you created an app. You're part of the creation of an app now that kind of lets the creators see in real time what will eventually be there. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, that was that. That's the view screen app that uh, right. was developed by by Brandon Fayette, who um, who who worked on the Orville. Yeah, yeah. And who who was B Fayette in Lasting Impressions? That's right. That's right. Exactly. And he uh, he developed that for the Orville actually, and and it became um, oh. even more useful for Ted as like a day to day tool. So uh, yeah, it, it 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 certainly made the the process. Um, a little less cumbersome. It's still a cumbersome process that takes a lot. You know, it's, it's strange that you think that between 2011 or whenever we started shooting the movie, um, 2010, is that whatever the hell it was, uh, that it was, um, no, it was later than that. When did the movie come out? 2012, Dude. right? So oh, probably yes, like that's right. Um, so that would be, what, 13 years later? You'd think the technology would be a lot more streamlined. It's really not that different. Um, if you it's screen, the quality at the end of the day, though, because like set, yeah. like his fur and all that is looking so great. It's it's in many ways. I think it looks better than the films, and that's sure. just that's just a, a function of the passage of time. But uh, the process that that we use to get them there is the the one thing that's a little easier is I don't have to wear those big straps on my. Uh, arms and legs and, you know, the big Borg gear that you have to throw on <laughs> to, to make sure that you get all the sensory data for the animators to work with. So all that, all that stuff has kind of been replaced by, by the view screen app, which is great. Cause that really oh. was a pain in the ass. Like I would have to be literally unplugged every time I wanted to go talk to the actors. I did not realize. So, I mean, so you did all that for Ted. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Cause you could have easily had, so this is what I love about your artistry genuinely is you know what you can bring to make these characters come to life, whether it is from Family Guy to American Dad to Ted, and you know you're the one that has to do it because you could have outsourced that job, but you yeah, need to it's, be the one that's doing it. Yeah, the, the 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 bear has to move like an actor, and it means you know as much as we can, we try to do that stuff live. So that's where the view screen app comes in. So if I'm recording dialogue, um, and I'm you know physically performing it's recording my movements as well and that's the ideal that's the ideal scenario so yeah it's it's the bear's voice but it's also my movements as well so i'm kind of you know andy circusing this whole thing and the problem is if i didn't do that it would feel it would feel very disjointed and kind of general and disconnected it, it just you wouldn't buy it so totally it, it all has to kind of come from the same uh person whether it's me or someone else it's like it just it all has to kind of be Unified, Mike. You hit the nail on the head. Then you are the father of Ted. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the mannerisms, the facial expressions, all that leads into it, and you only get that by doing it the way you do it. It sounds like. Yeah, and it's it's uh you know we have a great visual effects supervisor and Blair Clark who did the the movies as well, uh, and a fantastic uh, you know Tippett was great. Um, Frame Store Melbourne was. Um, really extraordinary with with the kind of nuances that they added to the uh you know to the mix so i would give them in my performance and they kind of had liberty to go in and like look if there's something that you think would help and like kind of tweak it and and add some sure. stuff they did a lot of that that really just made this even better so it's it's a collaborative effort, a collaborative effort in many ways between you know here's my acting now, now make it better. <laughs> well, because this is wonderful, too, because some of the best reaction moments, you actually get amazing reaction moments out of Blair, the the cousin. But we actually, the, some of the best Ted reaction moments are where he's not saying anything, but he's really confused as, as to what Johnny just said or is us as the audience. So it sounds yeah. like at, that team effort really makes those moments la land as well. Yeah, I mean he's a pretty simple looking character, so it's it's kind of less is more. You know, there's there's that there's that sort of general like you know, yeah, yeah, exactly. That you, see, <laughs> that you see Ted do a lot that just kind of is it, it it's it's a default for pretty much everything. It's it's our version of you know the Homer Simpson blank stare, which is just 
more interesting than than a lot of subtle nuance like let the audience imprint something onto ted from you know each person will have some idea of their own of what they think ted is thinking that's exactly right and just getting to see the reactions of georgia the, to the to, who is i think the the straight person on the cast just just reacting to the insanity and seeing her facial expressions i tell you if, if you're watching the show and, and doing something else on your second screen you're missing out because it's watching the people <laughs> that aren't speaking that is truly entertaining uh, in this show, and and it's a- across the board that way. We did give the actors each a a stuffed Ted about maybe three or four months before shooting started, and we encouraged them to kind of just don't leave home without it. Like take take the bear everywhere, and they really took it to heart. Like Max and Georgia, and Scotty and Lana. Like I think Max took the bear out to a bar and. You know, Georgia was driving with hers, which I guess you can use the HOV lane technically. I think at that point, <laughs> um, right? But uh, but but it really kind of the whole point was that get comfortable, you know, knowing exactly where his eyes are at all times. Wow. Uh, you know, if he's not there, just have it be second nature that you you know exactly where he's going to be. And and there there are things that you find, you know, everybody's eye line is different, so. Um, you know, on or on the Orville, for example, somebody was looking at a monitor. Some actors would need to look lower. Other actors would need to look higher because everyone's eyes are different. So your eye line. Is, what we found a lot with Ted was that when you look at his nose, it just looks a lot better on camera. So, you know, when we got to shoot, we said, "All right, just just ignore his eyes, look at his nose, and it's going to look about right." Wow. Yeah, because there's not a moment where I'm looking at it and going, "Oh, there's the CGI of it all too." You yeah. Know? Yeah. From the success of the movies to now. The most successful show Peacock has, has had, which has just got to feel so great. What is it, do you think, that America likes about Ted? Um, I mean, to be the most successful show on all of Peacock. <laughs> is, no small feat. To- I well, I mean, you know, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking three decades of programming. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you've also got you're the most successful launch of a of an American sitcom in the UK in decades. Yeah, yeah, about twenty years. Yeah, I I think it's that it's. I mean, in many ways, it's this it's the same thing that applies to Family Guy. It it it's just a show that's out to be funny. Mm-hmm. Um, it it's you know the, T- Ted is unique in that. A, a a lot of CGI kind of wants you to. Not wants you to know it's CGI, but it's kind of flashy and it's and it's kind of in your face a little bit with it. And the whole goal with Ted is that you just want to forget that it's CGI. Like yes. it just wants to be almost boring the way he gestures and the way he moves. Like there should be no big flourishes and things that you would generally see with an animated character that that you know you want to show off. Like the whole point is that he just needs to be as dull as any human. That makes me think of like Wahlberg and him fighting in the, in the motel. That mm-hmm. is as real as you can imagine a, an adult fighting with a teddy bear could be. Yeah. And you're not looking at huge, like I'm sure it's a huge CJ budget just to accomplish that, but it almost looks real. Like it's actually happening. Yeah. And that was, I mean, that whole fight was probably a minute and a half and it took three days to shoot. It was just a, uh, it, and it was, I mean, it was like so carefully storyboarded and pre beforehand. Like, I mean, everything about that fight was just. You can tell. It was, it was just like nothing left a chance. And it was just Mark, you know, Mark with like this stuffed ball. <laughs> that, uh, Is that he he's then... throwing at himself. And throwing... Yes, exactly. Exactly. Teddy freaking Ruxpin. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Well, we have a couple more minutes. Mike, why don't I let, let you ask the last couple of questions about our overview of Ted before we get into okay, it. Okay, uh, I've got questions. Uh, we'll, we'll rapid fire if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Is, is Sheila really that bad a name? She- <laughs> no. no. Our, you know, our, ca- our casting director, Sheila Jaffe, is a, is a very good sport. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Uh, was there a Ted in your life? And was it Mike Henry? It was, <laughs> it was not Mike Henry. I do remember having a teddy bear at one point when I was a kid. Um, uh, I, I remember actually dropping it in the toilet at one point, and that was very traumatic. So it was not on purpose. It was an no, accident. No, of course not. But, <laughs> your poor but, teddy bear. But, uh, 
but yeah, it's uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, it wasn't it wasn't like a huge part of my life, but I do remember having one at one point. I was very scared for Ted being flushed down the toilet and where he was going to go in in this <laughs> series, and we figured out wh- how school bathroom toilets work yes, in that moment. Yes, yes. It's very good. We're going to talk more about uh, reflections on the show and kind of looking back at it when if, uh, we have you back uh, at the end of our series. Uh, but for now, just talking about the creative process and things like that, kind of scale to one to ten. How much how much fun was the uh, just working with the with the rest of the cast and crew on this on this project? I mean, they're they're fantastic. Like you, you have four just world class actors, um, you know, three of whom we had on the Orville. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, they're 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 just phenomenal. I mean, it was it was, you know, the the real uh, challenge with this show is is the post work. But on set, you know, you have four actors who are so prepared, so on it. Each one has such an absolute command of their character. Like there just wasn't even anything close to like a tense moment at any point on set with these actors. Like they they just all, I, I mean, it just couldn't have been smoother. Um, you know they they had a blast they're 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 all kind of ready and itching to come back for a for a season 2 but they're uh they were fantastic i mean it was just a it was just a perfect cast Seth, we're we're looking forward to watching the whole series what would you want our viewers and listeners to think about or keep in mind while they're watching the series along with us you know it's a it's a it's a very good question it's it's not um it's a it's a different show from orville so it's not like there's a lot of uh you know uh, social undercurrents that that are woven through the sure. the narrative it's pretty much two guys who are getting high and getting into hijinks um <laughs> so bear that in mind with no yes. pun intended <laughs> yes yes it's we just just try to enjoy it we i know we're gonna enjoy because we already did and we're also gonna enjoy some bear fight whiskey well thank you so much seth for joining us again thank you jessica for being such a great co-host and join us next time as bear fight whiskey presents talking ted as we discuss the first episode Just say yes. Just say yes, Mike. Just say yes. Ted is produced by Roddenberry Entertainment. Executive producer Rod Roddenberry and John Champion. Our website and your opportunity to comment and connect with us is podcast.roddenberry.com.